This video is about everything you need to know before you visit Uzbekistan. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Just Go with Amreen. I am back with a new country yet again and today we are recording this in Uzbekistan. Yes, yes, it's a country that I never thought I would visit but finally it trapped me, it intrigued me, it interested me and I am here exploring this country. I am not towards the end of this trip. In fact, I am somewhere in the middle of this trip is when I am recording this. But I will be posting this first for you guys to check out any information you need to know if you are planning to visit Uzbekistan. I am going to basically be recording about 75% of this right now and 25% a bit later towards the end of my journey on the last day. Let's dive right into it. Point number one, I have already realized this, that you need to visit Uzbekistan for a minimum of eight nights and nine days. Yes, that may sound like a long time for a lot of people, but actually it's not. For Uzbekistan, it is a very short amount of time. It's actually quite cramped. I'm here for lesser than that. Yeah, I know, not well planned. <laughs> <laughs> this was a very last minute trip and I was not expecting to actually come to Uzbekistan but since I decided to just at the spur of the moment get up and do this trip, I couldn't spare more than 6 nights and 7 days. Hence, I'm actually skipping a very important part of Uzbekistan which is called Kiva. So, you want to come to Uzbekistan and you want to spend 8 nights and 9 days is bare minimum. What makes a country? What makes it actually interesting? Worth enough to even travel to it. Nature, that you see behind me. <laughs> I would say food, definitely, right? I mean, you can't go hungry. And the most important thing is people. If the people are rude, arrogant, and don't give a rat's ass if you're there, you don't want to go to a place like that. But, oh, the people in Uzbekistan are the sweetest people I've ever met. I think the last time I met such amazing, good-hearted people was in Vietnam. And the next time I have seen such warm-hearted, such loving, genuinely beautiful, welcoming, hospitable people is Uzbekistan. Try to fit in a local family Uzbek experience when you visit because that is going to make all the difference to your itinerary. It's going to actually make it quite unique of an experience. I had that experience on my very second day actually in Uzbekistan and it was quite a fluke but if you can arrange something like that or if you join my group trips, I will definitely be incorporating some of that local experience in the group trip. Uh, Google Translate. Yeah, I think it goes without saying. I think this was the same thing I added in Kazakhstan also. And I think all of Central Asia, you should just like copy paste this point everywhere. Do not leave Google Translate away. In fact, try to download the Uzbek language offline as well. Now, I will say why in my next point. Basically, Google Translate is your best friend. Nobody speaks a word of English. Yes, you will be able to find English speaking guides. But apart from that, it's just a lot of hand gestures <laughs> and uh, Google Translate. I generally don't buy local SIM cards. I used to do that. I stopped doing that because now my local carrier in Dubai has this very nice roaming package which is totally affordable. Yes, if you buy a local SIM card, of course it is. Like, there is no comparison of the price. But the thing is, I need to be on my mails and my calls and my local Dubai SIM needs to be active because of my other business. So because of that, I don't buy a local SIM card anymore. But in Uzbekistan, I encourage you to buy a local SIM card with data and stuff because if you are planning to do an itinerary like I have done where I go away to the countryside, away from the cities and stuff like that for a good three days, then you will be out of service and you will be at the mercy of a Wi-Fi which may or may not exist. So try to get a local sim card at least you know that will be working you can make calls with that i was so stuck <laughs> i was so stuck i i uh, thankfully i got wi-fi at the guest house but then the entire day entire day that i was out i had no connection if i didn't have a guide with me i wouldn't well, i would be so lost because i am traveling solo and nobody speaks a word of english so get a local sim card <laughs> Don't stay in a yurt. 
don't stay in a yurt if you are solo traveling off peak off beaten path don't stay in a yurt i tried to do that <laughs> i wanted to do that i have been wanting to stay in a yurt since a very long time but that was a total fail bad idea firstly you should know one thing about yurts they are sharing okay that's fine they have sharing toilets that may or may not be fine for a lot of people and lastly they don't exactly have a door <laughs> like a legit door and it's like a partition at best it doesn't have a door okay a uh, solo female traveler staying in a yurt no other traveler around nobody else around uh, nobody who speaks english no wifi no connection whatsoever can be a little discomforting and feel a little unsafe it was not unsafe it just felt that way so i left and i went somewhere else to stay which had a proper door you know you at least want to feel safe where you sleep right so if you're solo don't stay in a yurt okay this is kind of always the first point but the first points were far more important than this point so the best time to visit uzbekistan july august extremely hot i am here in may by the way may end starting uh, june 2nd i am going back so it's already extremely extremely hot during the afternoon you just cannot be outside you have to be indoors the heat here is actually very intense even though it's like 27 29 30 degrees the heat is very very intense do not forget your sunblock march is cold not very cold but cold april is fabulous time to come may is excellent as well and so is september october november it's raining and december jan feb is very cold especially jan and feb so nobody generally it's like the off peak off season completely so you get the idea spring and autumn best time to visit okay this is my last uh, point that i'm going to uh, record here uh, the next few points are about transportation and accommodations i have to actually finish my entire trip to give you any insight about that try to have one single one guide or one travel host like me throughout your trip who speaks english i tell you why you're going to need that you're going to need someone to communicate with and you know explain things to and you know just organize things for you i am facing a little bit of that problem because i don't have that but i met a group on my trip in uzbekistan when i was here and they had one guy who spoke english and excellent english mind you throughout the trip and that made life for them so much easier i am hosting a trip to uzbekistan myself the group trip is happening sometime in october or november end so if you are interested in joining one of those drop me a comment in the comment section below and i'll give you more details on that so i have to finish the vlog that i started when i was at either lake camp uh, about all the things you need to know before you fly to uzbekistan So let me talk about visas. Let me talk to my guys, which is Indians and UAE residents. Indians, you can apply online. There is an e-visa facility for you. And UAE residents, great news! If your passport is valid for six months and your residency is valid for only two months, and your Indian passport holder, you can fly to Uzbekistan. Yay! My residency was expiring in November and I was really wondering whether I'll be able to make it or not but when I called the embassy they said 2 months and I was thrilled. So that's the situation with visas. I will leave the link for the uh, e-visas for Uzbekistan down in the description box. Do check it out also figure out whether you can just show up or you need to apply for an e-visa. Next thing transportation download Yandex Go if you want to um take taxis in the cities for the trains and the flights you have to remember this is very important information you have to have to have to book them way in advance when i say way in advance like 2 weeks 3 weeks in advance all right the bullet train especially and even the domestic flights they get booked out way in advance like a month before especially if you are going in peak season with the domestic flight tickets and the uh, bullet train tickets they kind of cost sort of similar so $30 to about $60 is what you're looking at flights prices fluctuate and depend on the amount of luggage you're carrying as simple as that so i'll be very very fast because i have to board my flight in 3 minutes i have to figure out where my gate is 
anyway my flight flies in three uh, like my flight flies in half an hour so i'm going to combine these two points and talk about food and accommodations accommodations are great great you know the the quality of service and cleanliness and comfort and everything even in a three star hotel is excellent all right don't be hell bent on staying in the city center except in bukhara do stay in the old city in bukhara you may not even need a guide to go around the places okay unless you really want to know the history and stuff uh, you don't need a guide because everything is walking distance food vegetarians vegans of course as usual in central asia europe all these places you are going to face a little bit of a challenge sorry but yeah it's you will face a little bit of challenge these places are very meat dominant horse meat lamb meat beef meat i i don't even eat so much red meat the amount of red meat i've eaten here in the past one week horse meat is not as widely available as it was in kazakhstan uh, here it's more beef and lamb last thing i just want to mention about the weather it gets really really hot don't underestimate even if it is 27 degrees 29 degrees or 35 degrees it is way hotter this is literally i'm talking to people who live in the tropics like mumbai and or or, or people who live in dubai it's way 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 hotter because the heat is dry it's intense it burns you it really burns you so don't underestimate don't go on the numbers june july august is a sharp no do not come to uzbekistan you will roast bring loads and loads of sunscreen if you want snow then december january february are your best bets that is all from me i hope you enjoyed this vlog and this was useful if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below i have to board my flight now if you like this vlog you know what to do give me a big fat thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my upcoming adventures i will see you guys next week until then take care guys bye cheers my flight flies in 3 uh, like my flight flies in half an hour everything is walking distance shit about okay in fact oh 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 shit yeah that too okay